Hey, what's happening, gang? Bobby Spellman here for another thrilling and mind-expanding episode of... In today's episode, I'm going to do a super quick little tutorial on my favorite way of improving your tonguing speed. Alright, now, this is a very simple and sometimes very tedious technique, but it's the one that I've always used and I find it extremely useful for just gradually improving your speed of articulation. So, here's how it goes. First of all, you wanna make sure you've got your metronome. All right, your metronome is gonna be your best friend in this. It's gonna tell you where you're all wrong and it's gonna be a tough master, but I'll tell you what, if you can become a friend of the metronome, you're gonna be better off in the long term. All right, here's how it goes. So you're gonna start off at whatever tempo, all right, we're talking about single tonguing now, all right? So we're talking about single tonguing. You're gonna start off at whatever tempo you can comfortably single tongue eighth notes, all right? So I'm gonna start off here at 120 BPMs, but whatever is comfortable for you, you're gonna start there. As you practice this exercise, there are two things that you wanna remember. One, you wanna keep your air stream consistent. Your air is really of paramount importance in these exercises. You wanna make sure that you're maintaining a consistent air stream, which is going to allow your tongue to nimbly skip over your consistent air stream. All right, with an inconsistent airstream, all these exercises become extremely difficult. The second thing is you always want to be paying attention to the specific rhythmic timing that you're operating in. So you want to be listening to the metronome, really feel it internally, and try to subdivide that beat. Now, when I'm talking about subdividing, I mean hearing the beat and really hearing in your head those 16th notes or 32nd notes that divide up the quarter notes that you have in uh, the metronome. Okay, so as you're going, you're teaching your muscles how to operate within a specific time frame. If your muscles can learn how to operate within a particular time frame at a particular tempo, it's going to be much easier to be turning that metronome up gradually to increase the speed at which you can articulate. All right, so I'm going to start at 120 BPMs and I'm going to be doing uh, eighth notes single tonguing. So we're going to start there and we're going to then gradually increase the metronome. Here we go. As you go, if you find that you're able to maintain a consistent tempo at whatever speed you've got, we're going to turn it up, turn up the metronome. Now do it gradually, you want to do it a little gradually, but for the benefit of not making this video, you know, ridiculously long, I'm going to do this in, in big steps, okay? So now I'm up to 160. Again, I'm maintaining a consistent airstream, and I'm really trying to hear the time, feel the time, and get my tongue right, right on those eighth notes in between the beats. All right, we're going up to 200. Here we go. Now, if you get up to the top of your metronome and you're feeling that you're at a consistent speed, you can then bring it back down to a slower speed and divide into 16th notes. So we were at 200, so I'm gonna bring it down to 100. Okay, so we're gradually increasing the speed of the metronome. All right, you're getting somewhere with this, all right? Hold with me, stay with me here. All right, we're up to 120. We're getting to the top of where I'm starting to get comfortable, where I'm, where I'm comfortable here, all right? Let's bring it up to 160. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna see what happens when we overdo it. Now you can hear at this point, I'm no longer able to keep up with the metronome. I'm no longer able to keep a consistent rhythm as I go. You might find that your rhythm is starting to falter a little bit. You're not doing consistent 16th notes. Now you're moving around. At that point, you gotta go back. You gotta turn the metronome back down and find that sweet spot where you're able to hold on to that specific rhythm for as long as you can. One, two, three. Once you find that rhythm, you're gonna wanna hang out in that space for as long as you can. Just continue, take a little breaks from time to time but just really practice having your tongue really hit those rhythms right in time. All the while keeping that airstream consistent. So 
Sometimes it also helps just to put a little bit of an accent on the downbeats when you go, just to make sure that your body is right in time with where that metronome is and you can really feel where that time is. Not every note has to be perfect, but the idea behind it is to really continue to exercise that muscle and be able to single tongue in time with the metronome and a consistent airstream with everything being exactly the way that you want it. You wanna make sure that you're really teaching your muscles how to operate in time. Now over time you get tired, you're gonna find that you're gonna to start to get tired and you're gonna to start to fall off that time. Once you notice that you're no longer writing those 16th notes or eighth notes or even quarter notes, whatever is comfortable for you, you're gonna to wanna to take a little break or turn the metronome back down again. But you know, rest is always your friend in these things. All right, is this some great earth shattering new piece of advice? No, it's fairly straightforward, but I'll tell you, it's a big help in just developing that consistency of the single tongue speed and the clarity of your articulation. All that really counts is that you're using that air to really create a consistent airstream and that you're really thinking about subdividing those beats and really hearing that rhythm. As long as you're keeping your tongue in rhythm and you're able to gradually increase the speed of the metronome, you'll find that very quickly you'll be able to improve the speed of your single tonguing and it's gonna make your life all kinds of easier over many different genres of music and styles and approaches, whether you're playing classical music or whether you're improvising or any number of other things. All right, gang, there it is. It's a little tedious, nothing too special on that one, but it's a big help to me and I hope it's a help to you. All right, gang, have a wonderful time practicing and we'll catch you on the next one. All right, folks, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you found it useful or informative or just entertaining, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you got any questions or if this video helped you out, or be sure to send it along to any of your trumpet playing friends. We're currently offering lessons online and you can visit our website at www.ridgewoodschoolofmusic.com. We're also offering lessons in person in the Brooklyn, Queens, and greater New York City area. Be sure to send us a message and we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. You can also follow me, Bobby Spellman, on Instagram at, at Bob Spellman, on Facebook at Bobby Spellman Music, or on Twitter at Bobby Spellman for some more trumpet fun. <laughs> Lastly, if you found this video useful and you'd like to give a little donation to the cause, you can find us on Venmo at Ridgewood Music. All tips will go to the creation of more videos like this one, and we really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, gang. We'll see you on the next one, and happy practicing. <laughs>